Hello and welcome back to everyone that's tuned in to the American Ultra Stock channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're bringing to you guys a video about the transfer window. The transfers are right around the corner, so we're doing a segment that we had a while back. Hot takes, the most controversial, potentially high profile opinions on the transfers, uh, on the players. Just hot takes around the transfer window. Last season we saw a lot of move during the summer. This time around we have some players that may need one as well. Braden, straight to the point, what's one hot take you have for this upcoming transfer window? Yeah, and I'll quickly preface with this. Uh, the next video we'll have will be about players who absolutely need transfers this summer. So we're not going to go in depth into every player, just a couple of hot takes that we have as maybe a little bit of a preview for that. Uh, but my first one is going to be that the Olympics this summer in July and August will be the main catalyst for transfers. and. Maybe it's a bit of a risk involved because once the Olympics will be done, there won't be that much time left in the window because it ends at the end of August. There will be maybe a, a little less than a month, half a month, a couple of weeks left. But I think that a lot of the players that are in the Olympic pool are set for, for moves, for steps up in particular. You see Tanner Tessman this season, he's had at Venezia. I think he's primed for a Serie A move. Honestly, even if Venezia do end up winning their playoff final and get, getting promoted, I still think it's very possible that he could make a step up to a mid-table or even higher Serie A club. Jack McGlynn, his fellow midfielder, will 100% be moving, at least in the summer or at least in the next winter. There's a lot of interest and the one of the most trusted Philadelphia Union reporters has said that, that he will be moving basically off the back of his Olympics, that's going to generate the interest, and I think it will for most of the players. If he doesn't end up moving by at least the end of the year in next January, something's gone very wrong. Duncan Maguire as well, we saw his crazy transfer saga last January. Blackburn Rovers look like they're in for him for a third time. If I were him, I would stay away from that club, but there's sure to be others as well. Ligia Warsaw have been interested. There's been interest from a lot of different obscure clubs, but I think this finally will be the move the window where he'll get a move in. The Olympics will be important for him. Then there's the Westerlo duo, who will probably both be starting at the Olympics. Griffin Yao and Brian Reynolds both look destined for a step up or at least some sort of move. Yao will probably be to another, a higher profile club in the Belgian league. It would be just be my guess. And Reynolds, there's a lot of interest from a lot of different countries, really. Hull City was the main club that was bookmarked to be the ones who are leading the race, but he could really go anywhere. Caleb Wiley as well. I don't even know if he'll make the final roster, but there's been heavy interest from PSV for him, which I think makes a lot of sense considering that Ernie Stewart is their director. They've been signing Americans, and Caleb Wiley needs to get as far away from Atlanta as possible with their current state. There's a couple others, Slanina and Paxton Aronson, who will probably get loans this summer. I've been saying it since January. Slanina needs to get a loan to Strasbourg, and I think it will actually happen. Since they sold Sells to Nottingham Forest, their goalkeeper position has basically been up for grabs, and I think Slanina, with the partnership that Chelsea have with Strasbourg, is the perfect opportunity for him to come in and test himself in a real league. Not that Belgian league is bad, but the club he was playing with, Oipen, were kind of a joke, so to test himself at a real level where things matter a little bit more, I think would be good. And Paxton could be looking for a high profile air divisi or maybe a, a lower league, a lower level Bundesliga club as a step up from Vitesse, but we're not sure if he's really a Frankfurt level just yet. And then there's there's even others, Busio, Aiden Morris, Patrick Schulte, John Tolkien. All these guys have had reported interest and could be making moves. I think for these four, I'm a little less optimistic that they will actually get the transfers even though I think, especially for some of them, the crew duo in particular, they need it to advance their career. I think especially Aiden Morris is done with MLS. He's done everything he can do. He needs to make a move if he wants to stay relevant, uh, as well as some of the other guys in there. And then finally, one outside shout, Rokas Puxtas. Definitely won't be with the Olympics uh, unless something crazy happens, just due to not getting released in the past. He hasn't been with the group. It's very unfortunate because he's such a promising talent top 30 in the Golden Boy, which is crazy for an American. I don't think I can remember anyone being as high as him in the past. And I think it's time for him to make a step up from high to split. There's been a lot of interest from big name clubs, uh, particularly in the Serie A. I think it's finally time for him to make that step up and see how he can do at a higher level. So overall, I mentioned a lot of players there. That's like half the Olympic roster already. And who knows, maybe there's even more. I mean, all these players are young, their careers are just getting started. So I think a lot of transfers could potentially happen, especially if we have a good Olympics, which I think we will.
And then we'll see Kate Cowell scoring bangers at the youth level and the Olympics and move away to Bologna and Taylor Booth moving to Man United too. So <laughs> obviously joking there. Hey, you never know. I've seen Stranger Things, but I agree with you. It will be a catalyst. Probably it will attract more interest for these players than they have currently if they perform well, which we hope that they can do and get us a medal there. That will be really, really nice. Moving on to my first take, it would be that Weston will leave Juventus. It's a hot take. Some people think that he should stay. I think that him staying is not bad at all. I don't think he can get a move to a bigger club than Juventus and be a regular like he is there. But I think that just the fan situation, some fans are still not very open to him. I don't know why. But I think that he will leave Juventus and that move will define his career. It will basically define where he will spend his prime years. I think that that's where he will develop and play his best soccer. So I'm calling it now that he will leave and that it will define. If he goes to sort of a medium-sized club, that's likely where he's going to stay for quite a while. I think he's at the age where it's the perfect age to get a move to a big enough club where you can cement yourself as a top, top player or as maybe a cult hero for a mid-sized club. So I think it's the career-defining move right here. It doesn't have as much time as some of the other guys, especially for his position on the pitch as well. Moving on to your second take, Braden. Yeah, so my second take is a little bit related, but also not. It's kind of centered around a league. Uh, I think there's been a lot of reported Premier League interest in a lot of our players. And my hot take is that Mark McKenzie and Josh Sargent will make this step up but none of the other players that have been linked will. We'll start with the ones that I think will make the moves. McKenzie, I think, is a perfect option for mid-table, maybe lower-level Premier League clubs as a centre-back option. He's a very quick defender. He's been playing very well in Belgium. He even captained Genk in the last game of the season, which I think was basically a send-off for him. I think it was kind of a sign that he will be looking to move on this summer. Maybe he won't be in the Premier League. Who knows? There's a lot of other options out there, but I do think it makes the most sense. There's a lot of interest from West Ham, but they did just sign Fabrizio Bruno from Flamengo, so I think that spot might be filled unless they end up selling a player or two. But I think there's a lot of clubs that could make sense. Everton will probably be selling Jared Braintwaite this summer. He's been excellent this year, so maybe a spot could open up there. Nottingham Forest have had real issues at the back, and Murillo might be leaving, the Brazilian youngster who's been pretty good all season. Some of the promoted clubs, I think Ipswich could definitely do with a player. Southampton as well, though I don't really want him to go there because I think they'll go straight back down. There's a bunch of others as well that I think anyone around that range could probably use him at least as a backup option. I think he could start for some clubs in that range as well. For Sargent, I think I only have one club, but I think it makes perfect sense. He has to go to Brentford. Ivan Tony will probably be leaving the club. I think he's been very disrespectful and dismissive since coming back from the loan. He, I think he, ha he already has one foot out the door, really. From last summer, all the interest that he had from big name clubs, deservedly so. Incredible season he had last year, but then the ban stopped all of that. He came back and had a more of a limited role this season. It was kind of under the radar. If he's at the Euros, which I think he might be, that'll be a huge catalyst for him to gather some interest from the bigger clubs again. Tottenham were in for him, Arsenal were in for him, Chelsea will probably be in for him because they're in for everybody. There's going to be a big fight for his signature. I do think he'll leave and that leaves Sargent as the perfect man to step up and take his spot. So I think if it, if it does happen, that's the move I would want to see. And I think other Premier League clubs would want him as well. He's a proven championship, high quality striker who's still just 24. It's time to make the move. And then just quickly addressing some of the ones who have had interest. You mentioned one of them, Weston McKenney. I would prefer to see him stay at Juve, despite the fact that, like you said, there has been a little bit of hesitation from the Italian fans. I think the Manchester United news, if it is legit, is going to be very tempting. They're a huge club, but honestly, I think if he goes there, he'll end up being a flop. So I hope he doesn't. I'm going to stay optimistic and say he doesn't go to the Premier League. Same for his teammate, Wea, who has had links to Everton, Aston Villa. I don't think it makes sense for him to go. Haji Wright, I'm sure, will have interest due to his incredible season. I think it makes sense for him to stay at Coventry for one more season. Uh, Scally had interest in Newcastle. I don't know where that came from. He's really not that great of a player. I think it's just due to his age and he's been playing in the Bundesliga for so long that maybe they think he could turn to something. I don't think he'll move. And then CCV as well had been looked at by a couple of clubs, particularly Fulham. I don't think he'll move. He's going to stay at Celtic for a while. Spent himself as a legend there, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. But that's overall my takes on these players.
Yeah, you mentioned a few of them and I've mentioned it previously. It ties into my second one right here that although he won't move Musa, Yunus Musa will be the one that whose stock drops down the most after this transfer window. Because I'm not saying that he has to leave because I don't think that's the case. Is that a, it's nice for him to have some stability after that Valencia experience. It's fine for him to just be a bit part player, rotational player for Milan squad. It's a giant of a club. But with some possible moves, even for Luca de la Torre, who said that he would be willing to explore new things, Celta de Vigo, I think that the ship has kind of sailed. They have both extracted the best out of each other. He can get a move. He has played relatively well to try some new waters. Venezia with a, a promotion. I think that Tesman and Busio, I don't know if Tesman really stays because if Venezia gets promoted, Vanoli will likely go to Bologna and he has expressed several times that he would like to take Tesman with him. Bologna in the past have tried to pursue him, but regardless, with uh, be it Buzio with a regular playing time in Serie A, Luca de la Torre getting a move, or Tesman uh, getting a move or staying at Venezia and with regular time, they are all going to play more than Musa. They kind of compete for the same position. We have Johnny emerging there, can play at the eight as well. I think that he's actually really, really good at that position. But if Greg tries to play with uh, Johnny and Adams in the future, we have Wes flying high. I think that Musa's stock has already dropped this season compared to in the past with the three-man workhorse midfield that Greg loved where he was a, a lock for a starter. After this transfer window, although through no fault of his own, I think that Musa's stock will drop the most, which it is a hot take because some people really like him. I hope that he has a good season, but that's what I got. Moving on to your final hot take for this tra transfer window, Braden. So my final one's going to be a lot more straightforward than my first two. Uh, I'm just going to be focusing on one player, and that is Serginho Dest. And my take is that he will stay at Barcelona this season and will unfortunately probably lose another season, kind of like what happened to AC Milan, kind of like what happened this year for Gio Reyna. But I do think with his contract expiring at the end of the year next season, I think he'll sign back for PSV on a free next summer. Now, this does kind of throw a spender in the works if Caleb Wiley does get signed, but to be brutally honest, I don't rate Caleb Wiley as much as a lot of people do. I think he's been kind of stagnant for a while now, and you can blame Atlanta. I think Atlanta have a big part to play in that, but I just don't think he's PSV ready. I think if he were to go there, it could be a similar situation to Cole Bassett at Feyenoord, where they make the move too early, struggle for minutes, get a loan to, like we saw with Bassett, Fortuna Sitarda, a lower level area to visit club, struggle, and then maybe even come back to MLS. And that wouldn't even be a bad thing. I mean, we see how good Cole Bassett's playing this year. I think he's been incredible and looks certain to make a move back to Europe at some point, probably sooner rather than later if he keeps up the performances. So if it were to play out that way, I don't think it'd be a bad at all for Wiley. It's just all about how you learn from the experience. But whether they sign him or not, I think that Dest is their dream left back. I think they 100% would have triggered the buy option if he didn't get that ACL injury. And I think if he is available on a free, it's a no-brainer to bring him back. I mean, he was one of, if not the best defender, especially fullback in the Eredivisie this season. Crucial for their run in the Champions League where they fought toe-to-toe -to -toe with the current Champions League finalist, Borussia Dortmund. We've, it's, he's proved that he's more than good enough for the club. Although, who knows, maybe he'll go to Feyenoord, complete the trifecta of the biggest clubs in the Netherlands. That would be uh, definitely an interesting thing. But I think he will go to PSV. It's just a shame that it'll be at the, the loss of another season. That is a hot take. I would love, I'm the biggest Serginho fan, so I would like to advocate that if he stays at Barca for a full-length season, he somehow fulfills that childhood dream he seems to have to be a regular there and doesn't waste the season. My last take right here, it's associated with the Olympic roster guys. You mentioned him already, it's Griffin Yao. And I will, I'm saying he will move this summer and he's one move away, one season away at whichever club he goes to from overtaking Kevin Paredes in the USMNT scope. I think we've seen with his performances, I will just say it now, although he's still a, a player that's emerging on a lot of people's radar, I think that he was more impressive than Kevin Paredes at the moment. He's the better player, but Greg doesn't mention him. I don't think Greg really knows or watches him. I don't expect him to do so. That's okay. But Greg has mentioned Paredes in the past, has given him some call-ups, even a start. With the A team, I think that Griffin Yao is one season away with this move that he that I'm predicting he gets from overtaking Paredes in the USMNT A level. And the hottest take so far, maybe I think he'll be in contention to be a starter in 26. Crazy take there, but that's what I have right here. Any final considerations, Braden? 
Yeah, just one thing that uh, I ended up leaving off. Uh, an absolutely crazy shout. Uh, I don't know if this will happen, but if it does, I'll look like a genius. I think that somehow Giorena will end up at Valencia on loan. Just because of the relationship that Jorge Mendez, his agent, has with Peter Lim, the Valencia owner. Now, do Valencia fans like Peter Lim? Absolutely not. They've been wanting him to sell the club for a while now, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen, unfortunately, for the Valencia fans. They've had an American in the past, Yunus Musa. Does Reyna fit the system? Nah, not really. But, in fairness, he didn't really fit the system at Nottingham Forest either, and he still got the move because Jorge Mendez just buddies up to his friends and doesn't really care about the lower profile players on his agenda. Obviously the stars he'll pay attention to, like Ronaldo, some of the high profile Portuguese guys, but players like Reyna who are so low on his pecking order as a super agent, he won't really care that much about. So I think he'll go to Valencia on loan. I hope it doesn't happen because I think he'd have another pretty poor season if it did. Hopefully he can get a better move, but that's just my current prediction for that. Nice, nice. And on that note, I would just like to plug again, we just mentioned the Giorena, player that needs a move. We're going to have the uh, video that's more in-depth with more analysis, talking about all the players that need a move that we would like to see moving in the future. Uh, thankfully, the situation was sorted for Wes, one way or another, and Pulisic last season. So let's hope that that can happen. Stay tuned for that video in the future. Leave a comment down below what you thought about our thoughts. Do you think any of these takes are too absurd? And what you think will happen during the summer? We'll stay looking forward to read all of your comments or reply to all of them. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We'll see you next time.